Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of JNAI Vlog. So I've got some questions from my students. Uh, how exactly do people train a GPT model? Uh, GPT is actually short for Generative Free Trained Transformers. So we're going to start with transformers. So in this episode, I actually released a package. We're going to walk you through a quick tutorial of how to train a completely blank transformer model from scratch. With that being said, let's get started. So this is the repository. We're going to drop this link on the YouTube video below. And this is already released in the public. There are YouTube tutorials as well as Jupyter Notebook examples. So let's go to a notebook. First thing you will need to do is to pip install the Wing Transformers package. After that's done, this is all the code that you need to build a transformer model, compile it, and then to fit the data on it. And here, as you can see, I have five epoch, so that will be five iterations to train this model. And that's literally it. So I designed this package in a way uh, it's meant to be very simple. Now, of course, you might ask, hey, how is this wired together in the back end, right? So to know that, you can go to GitHub repo and then go to Wing Transformers. The source code is actually saved in this Python script called transformers.py. Uh, so if you go in there, it actually lists out all the helper functions needed to build this transformer model. For example, we have a DOP product that is for the attention mechanism because attention mechanism is a key component to build a transformer model. Essentially, it will calculate the weights of each component in the output by using a DOP product. And it will require query key value, things like that. Now, of course, a mask is also required. Uh, now, all these things are nothing but just tensors. A tensor is essentially a matrix. So really, we're just talking about matrix multiplication here. And that's essentially what the first helper function is doing. And then once that's defined, we can then define a class object called multi-head attention. What the multi-head attention do is it calculates the attention on multiple threads in parallel. And here's a source code to do that. Now, for example, you have a method that split the heads, and then you call a function to put the things together. And then here, of course, we invoke the scale.product attention helper function that we define above. And then in the end, you create a dense layer. So another way to say this is you can think of this multi-head attention as a dense layer or like a TensorFlow layer in a neural network model. Once that's done, of course, we're going to pass the information forward. So we have a feed forward neural network. And that's nothing but just two dense layers right now. You can, of course, customize this by introducing your own models. Another thing that's extremely important, it's the positional encoding. And essentially what this function is doing is it calculates the angles using sine cosine function as listed out here. We want to calculate the angles of these axes and models. And then we do that using sine cosine functions. And then in the end, we cast them together. And the reason this is important is because this mechanism is necessary to understand the sequential awareness, right? Otherwise, the model does not understand the order of words or the sequential flavor in the context. Uh, so this function gives the model that capability to understand the order of words. And then once we have the layer together, we want to, of course, put everything together, right? So here we define a class object called encoder layer. Uh, that is just another layer object from TensorFlow package. And the layer consists of multi-head self-attention mechanism followed with a feed forward network. And that's essentially nothing but just to put the, all the helper functions together from above. So in this initialization, as you can see, we have multi-head attention that's defined here called self.mha. We also have a feed forward, right, FFN. And then we have a couple of normalization defined. And that's pretty much it. Uh, with all these things being defined, we can then put them together by knitting them in this particular order. And whatever output that is, we want to, of course, return that. And as you can see here, I'm using functional API using TensorFlow. So each line individually acting as a function. And then whatever the output of that layer can then be called later on downstream in the code. Once we have the encoder layer, of course, we want to encoder. En encoder essentially taking one step further by stacking the encoder layer together. 
So after the initialization, you can see that we have embedding, we have positional encoding, we have encoder layers. Here we actually have a for loop to allow users to control how many encoder layers that you want to stack together. Of course, in the end, you make a call, you return the output. And from that on, you are pretty much done with all the helper functions. The last component is the transformer model. You build a transformer model by defining this class object. And in this class object, we're going to call everything above. So it's a sequence to sequence task as indicated here, meaning that there's a sentence coming in, there's a sentence going out. And in the middle of this transformer model, of course, I want to give you guys full transparency. So we have all the initialization. And in the initialization, of course, we're going to call encoder object. And then once that's done, in the end, we're going to put the encoder together, and then we're going to return the output. Now, of course, there are a couple of methods here, uh, such as configuration, things like that. And we're building this not as one shot, right? We want to come back to continue to train this model, uh, hence the purpose of having these configurations, because the second letter in GPT means pre-trained. So what it means is it actually is a fine-tuned model. So that implies there's a model that's being trained on one domain, and then the weights are then continue to be trained on different sets of domain. So the configuration allows us to serialize the model and allow us to do that. And that's also why here on top of this class object, I want to make sure that this object is serializable. So with that being said, that's everything that goes into the back end of this transformer model. And now that everything is saved in this package, you can actually import this in a very simple flavor. And then hopefully this will make your life easier. Last but not least, I just want to say that the sample data is actually just random numbers right now. It's a random matrix followed by a certain vocabulary size, certain matrix dimensions, so that we can train this model according to that dimension. Of course, this does not quite make any sense because these are random numbers for now, for the sake of this tutorial. Next episode, when we come back, we're going to dive into how to create a sample data that's following the same dimension, but is actually coming from real sentences. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.